Welcome back, my good students. Uh, today, we're going to do this topic that I'm pointing to, fractional e exponents. And I'm going to give you a little example here to show you how this works. This is the square root of 4. And I put a 2 here because every time you do square root, it's understood to have a 2. Understood means you don't have to write it. If you leave it out, it doesn't matter. So this is the same as just plain square root of 4. Okay, But I put the 2 in. And I'm also going to put the exponent of 1 over here, which is also understood. But I'm putting those in to explain how this works. You could always write this as a fraction whenever you have a radical. And the number inside is called the radicand. That's whatever is inside the radical. So you could write that. And then you could put a fraction. The exponent, which is 1, will always go on top. And this number outside, that's called an index. This index, or 2 in this case, would go on the bottom. So that's the general way that you can get a fraction out of a radical. Now what you'll have to know is how to take the fraction and simplify it into a radical. So I'm going to give you the rule on that. The rule works like this. If you take anything, I'll call x anything, and you have a fraction, a over b, you always change it to a radical. The bottom number is the index, goes right here. You write the radicand, or the number, the base, inside. And then the top number, that becomes the exponent. That goes right here. Okay. Now you could also do it with parentheses. You'll see when I do some examples why it's sometimes helpful to do the parentheses. You could do the radical part first and then the exponent. And that's usually easier because when you do a, a radical, it makes the number smaller. When you do an exponent, it makes it bigger. So another way to write this is put a parenthesis and do the radic radical first. Okay, and then when you finish that, then you do the exponent. Okay, now we're going to go through some examples to show how this works. Okay, now in each example, you have to simplify the problem. Okay, let's start off with some very simple ones. We're going to do 4 to the 1 half. Okay, now because it's a fraction, you're going to apply this rule right here. You're going to immediately write a radical. The base goes inside. The bottom number goes outside, that's the index. And the top number goes here, okay, as the exponent. This is very easy to simplify because the 1 is understood and the 2 is understood. So it's just the square root of 4, and I'm sure you realize that's 2 times 2. Okay, we're done. Okay, but now let's take one where you don't have a, a square root. For example, let's say you have 27 to the 1 third. Okay, using this rule right over here, we're going to change it to a radical. We're going to write down the 27 inside. The bottom number goes on the index right here. And the top number is an exponent. Now, because it's a 1, and we mentioned that that's understood, we're just going to leave out the 1. So now you have to do something called cube root. It works very similarly to when you do square root. When you do square root, you find a number that when you multiply by itself twice, you get the answer that's inside the radical. When you do cube root, you need the same number three times. One, two, three. Okay, and it's got to be the same number that when you multiply that number, you get 27. Okay, a little tip. You're not using calculators, so the, the problems you get will always have small numbers between 2 and 10. Not 1, because 1 always gives you 1, and you're not going to use that. So you say to yourself, what number that's small could I multiply by itself to get 27? And that, of course, would be 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. So the answer is 3, cube root of 27. Okay, now we'll be back in about 10 seconds, and I'm going to start showing you some more examples. Okay, this is the third example. In this case, we have 9 to the 5 over 2. So we're going to use the rule that I showed you. We're going to make a radical. The 2 would be the index, but we don't need to write that because, two, remember, square root or the 2 is just understood. We write the 9, the base, inside, and we have the 5. Now, I want you to notice something. 
if we try to do it this way, it's very complicated without a calculator because you'd have to do 9 to the fifth power, which will give you a huge number, and then to take the square root of that, it'll drive you a little crazy. So you don't want to do it that way. Instead, we're going to use it, we're going to do the square root first of just 9, and we're going to put the 5 second or last, and we're going to show that with parentheses, just like that. Okay, now the problem's not that hard because square root of 9 is 3. Since we did what was in the parentheses, we don't need the parentheses. We're just going to take it to the fifth power. And all that means is 3 5 times. Okay, now to finish it, you're going to say 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. And 81 times 3 is 243. At any time, if you're not sure of the answer, just simply multiply it like this. Okay, and you'll see that the final answer is 243. Okay, so that's another example that gets a little more involved where you have to actually work it out. Okay, now number four, the next example, is going to show you how you could use laws of exponents along with what you just learned and do this. For example, n to the negative one-fifth multiplied by n to the three-fifths. Okay, in this case, we're multiplying two bases which are the same. So remember the law of exponents when you do that? You just add the exponents. So you get n to the negative one-fifth plus three-fifths. Okay, now since the denominators are already the same, you could just leave it as the same denominator. That's n with a five on the bottom. And now we could add the numerators. Now the negative sign, it doesn't matter where you put it, but since we want to just keep the denominators both 5, we'll put the negative on top. And think of it as negative 1 plus 3. That represents the top. And negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So you get n to the 2 fifths. Now if, if the problem just says simplify and you write this answer, that's okay. But occasionally you may see a problem where they say express in radical form. If they say express in radical form, you have to turn this into a radical. So another answer would be a radical, the base inside, the bottom goes where the index should be, which is 5, and then the exponent is 2. And since we don't know what n is, you would be done. You just leave it like that. So the, these are answers that when you simplify, you'll get it. Now, in the back of the textbook, when you check the answers, they may write it like this. That's why I showed you that. Okay. Uh, in about 10 more seconds, we're going to go on to two more examples. Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is example 5. It says x to the 3 fourths inside of parentheses, and on the outside it's to the negative two-thirds. These are exponents. Okay, now remember the law of exponents when you have a parentheses and an inner exponent and an outer that you just multiply them? That's what we're going to do here. So you copy the base and you multiply three-fourths times negative two-thirds. Now if you want you could cancel right here. You could just say three into three one, three into three one, and then the other way, 2 into 2, 1, 2 into 4, 2. In case you got a little loss there, all you're doing is this. 3 fourths multiplied by negative 2 thirds. Okay, since we're multiplying, the signs are unlike. You always get a negative. And then the threes, since you're multiplying fractions, you could cross cancel. 3 into 3, 3 into 3, 2 into 2, 2 into 4. So if you want to, you could write it separate. But it's just as easy, I think, to do it this way once you understand it. Notice the one negative, because you've got to make sure you have a negative. And you're left with 1 times 1, which is 1 on the top. And on the bottom, there's 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, and you could also check if you want. Just do it here, and you'll see 1 times 1 with a negative, because there's one negative, and then 2 times 1. Okay, now this answer is correct. However, it has a negative in the exponents. Remember I told you you have to get rid of the negative? So that's using another law that you had learned in the past. When it's a negative in the exponent, you write 1 on top as a fraction over the same problem without the negative. So it's 1 over x to the 1 half. And this would be a good answer 
Or, if the question says express in radical form, you would change the bottom to a radical, which would be square root of x, because the 2 is understood as the index, and the 1 as the exponent on the x, that's understood also. So we're done. Okay, I have one last example right over here. This one also uses a law of exponents. This is division. Remember when you divide exponents, the law is you copy the base and you subtract the top, take away the bottom. So this would be one-third, take away five-thirds. Okay, now since the denominators are the same, uh, you're going to put these fractions together by just keeping the same denominator and then doing 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. Now the minus should go in the middle. I'll explain why in a second. If you did put the minus on top or the bottom, it wouldn't matter. It would still be right. But the reason I put it in the middle is so we could use that law of exponents, the one I just did right over here. We write 1 over x to the positive 4 thirds. Okay, and that would be a good answer. Or in radical form, 1 over the cube root of x to the fourth power. Okay, and that would also be good. All right, try to do these examples on your own after you see me doing it and see if you could do it without looking. If you could do that, you're good. You're learning this, and then you're ready to start the homework. Okay, have fun with the homework, and let me know by email if you have any problems. Bye for now.